going on guys chase chase wins.com coming to you for friday uh september the 18th 2020 friday as always and will always be my favorite bet favorite day of the betting week usually doesn't matter what sports we're talking about or what time of the year it is i always love and enjoy fridays we always tend to have winning fridays it's kind of like sundays sundays and fridays are always huge huge days for us even when we have winning days all seven days of the week Friday and Sunday usually stand above the rest and are just great days altogether. So I am excited. Um, as far as what is on on deck for Friday, um, there is Major League Baseball action. There is the start of the Western Conference Finals between the Lakers and the Nuggets. We're actually going to talk about that play here in just a second, um, or that game here in just a second. No NHL action because congrats to the Tampa Bay Lightning. They finally closed out the uh, the New York Islanders on uh, Thursday night and advanced to the Stanley Cup Finals, who well, they will be taking on the Dallas Stars. Um, anybody that's followed me for any length of time knows that in any sport, usually I do not charge for my big futures, my, my picks for who I think in that particular sport will be crowned champion at the end, whether it be World Series champion, Super Bowl champion, NBA Finals champion, Stanley Cup champion, or national champion when we talk about college sports. And if you go back over the few years uh, since I've gone public and started making YouTube videos, there has only been twice where I have made a prediction um, either before the season started or in the first week of the season and have not been correct. Last year, I was not correct in the NBA, as I don't think anybody really was. Um, I don't know of anybody that chose the Toronto Raptors to win it all. So I was not correct about that. Um, I did say that they would make the Eastern Conference Finals. And I don't even know anybody that, that picked them to do that. Um, but I did not have them winning it all last year. I did not. So I was incorrect about that. Um, and the only other one that I got wrong was, believe it or not, the 2019 World Series. I had the Houston Astros to win it all, and we chose that back uh, while spring training was still going on. And nobody liked that pick. Nobody. And um, they did not win it. But it, they did go to the World Series, and they did take it all the way to a Game 7. So as close as you could have possibly been to it, we got there. Um so usually very good in our futures predictions. And this year, at the very, very beginning of the season, I think it was the, the yeah, it was day one of the season. We did a live show, and uh, somebody asked me, who's your prediction to win it all? I said Tampa Bay, and now they are officially in the Stanley Cup Finals, four games away from doing such. As everybody knows, my pick at the beginning of the NBA season to win it all was the Lakers. I don't care what the Nuggets did against the Clippers. I was a skeptic of the Clippers. I've always been a skeptic of Kawhi Leonard. I've never liked Paul George. I mean, so, you know, say what you want. I don't care. Um, never been impressed by that team. You know, they talk about Doc Rivers, you know, being this elite coach. I mean, look, Doc's eye. But what he did in Boston – you take his success with a grain of salt. I mean, he also had the big three there, led by Kevin Garnett. So that's kind of like coaching a Michael Jordan team or a LeBron team, if you want to say it. The coach is just there. He's he's a warm body. That's it. So my pick is still the, the Los Angeles Lakers to win it all. As much as the nonsense that LeBron James has spewed out of the hole in his face over the past few months and, and lost all respect I had for him as a human, which was quite a bit. Um, it doesn't change the fact that I think that the addition of Anthony Davis to the Lakers with him and the chemistry they have, I think is just going to be too much for the Nuggets. So we'll see. But in game one, we are going to have a pick. So uh, one thing that I want to talk about as far as this week, uh, Bristol race uh, for the playoffs in NASCAR, Patrick, um, who welcomed a new baby boy into the world this week, 
has his uh, package on sale for $99. That will be gone at midnight on Friday. It was supposed to come down the other day, and we actually had an issue with the package where people weren't able to add it to their cart for some reason. Um, and it was something with the coding. We got it fixed, so there was people that were trying to get it weren't able to and they were trying to do it within the time we had it set up so i you know once we got it working and everything i promised everybody we would leave it up for 48 hours so it was up thursday morning it will be up until midnight on friday night as well as major league baseball postseason oh before we even get into that um football is coming back into all you know all conferences so the big tens announced they're back pac 12 is going to come back and that's going to have a trickle down effect to the mountain west to the mac all of these conferences are going to be back what i do think we're going to see is a longer football season i think that this is going to spew over into um deep into next year because they're going to have some scheduling issues when they come back when you know other conferences and everything are weeks ahead of them how much ramp up time are they going to have before they go out there and play a game that goes on, you know, on the record books. So I think that that's going to be a little issue they have to get through. But I think that benefits us as investors to have more time to prepare. And it also gives us a longer college football season, which is great. So what I decided to do, because I really wasn't pushing college football heavy this year as far as the season package, because I knew it was going to be a down year. Now that it looks like we are going to get football in its fullest form, I have brought back the uh, combo pass with NFL and college football, which is a $2,000 package, usually $2,500, on sale for $9.99. That is this week only. As far When football kicks off on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, that price will go back up to its normal $9.99 per. So you won't be able to get $9.99 combo deal. If you want either or, college football or NFL, you can buy just singulars for $500 a piece. Everybody's jumping on NFL right now. Uh, we've played six NFL games so far this season. Well, no, we've played seven. We've pushed one game and we've won the other six. So, And we've also given out two leans as winners to everybody that's on my email list. Um, we have a text list coming out, so you can be a part of the text group. Whether you are subscribed, not subscribed, we'll do, be doing free plays through there. When the plays are ready each day, people can opt in to have a text message sent to them. All these things are coming out this week. Uh, marketing team is working on getting that set up. I hope that it is fully functional this coming week. So again, for my clients that I know are going to want to do that and not have to worry about email anymore, be patient. You don't have to send me anything saying that you want it. I know everybody will be sent the link and the instructions on how to opt into the tech service as soon as it goes live. And we are going to be working on that tomorrow. So a lot of good stuff in the works. Biggest special that we've got going on right now is Major League Baseball's postseason. That package is usually $249 each year. That gives you every premium and daily top play that I have with Major League Baseball from the MLB King from Wild Card to World Series. From wild card games till somebody hoists that World Series trophy, you get every premium and daily top play. Two forty nine package. Right now, through this weekend, you can get it for one ninety nine. After that, it goes back to two forty nine, and the playoffs are right around the corner. They will be here in the blink of an eye. They are getting ready to start. The regular season is winding down, so make sure you take advantage. Save the fifty bucks, guys. I know you guys don't think that. Oh, you know, he's not giving us this huge deal. Fifty bucks is fifty bucks. If you're going to buy it anyway, why wait a week and have to spend more money when you could save money and get you're getting the same thing? Use your head. Anyway, speaking of Major League Baseball, there's another winning day in Major League Baseball on Thursday. Another good day. We, we dropped two plays that we shouldn't have, and then one of them was the free play. That's two free plays we've lost in a row, which never happens. So we've got to get back on the free play winners. Um, I had somebody tell me today, you suck, you're the worst free plays ever. But I went back and looked at the analytics of that gentleman, and he has watched, oh, I don't know, the last 200 videos that I've done. He's one of the first ones every day to watch it. When we won 14 out of 16 of the last ones before that, gave double free plays um, some days, did the scouting reports that all the information I gave there and where I hinted you to go, uh, those were also winners. He doesn't have anything to say. Nothing then. It's only when I drop two free plays that I'm the worst in the world. Go figure. I love that. I think it's hilarious. But anyway, 
we got to get back on that. But as far as Major League Baseball goes, speaking of that, um, the free play, the Cardinals were doing what they needed to do. One really bad botched inning, gave up four runs there. Um, that's what killed them. That was their demise. That really shook them. They never came back from it. That and the Houston Astros, why are they not swinging the bat? They've got an opportunity on Friday with Zach Greinke, who I think is a top three pitcher in Major League Baseball. He struggled the past couple of times that he's gone to the bump, but take that with a grain of salt because his team's just not playing. You're not going to convince me that it's because they're just cheaters. That's the only way they can win. You're never going to convince me that George Springer, Carlos Correa, and Alex Bregman can't swing the bat, swing a bat with the best of anybody. Jose Altuve can go fuck himself. But other than that, these are talented guys, defensively and offensively. And it's not that they're not just having success at the plate. Half the time, they're not even swinging. And this is at good pitches. They're not playing a good team. They're playing the Texas Rangers. They're playing one of the worst teams in the American League. A team that can't get out of their own way. I don't understand it. I just can't wrap my brain around it. But other than that, uh, as much as I didn't want to do it, I took the Yankees on the run line today. I just didn't love the line, but all the numbers were there in overwhelming fashion. So that was an easy, easy win there. Um, I've got people now telling me that, yes, I was right that the Yankees would come back and go on a massive run at the end of the season. But now they're telling me that I was wrong to say that the Yankees wouldn't win the World Series in 2020 and that they are the most dominant team in baseball when healthy. And to that I say, get your head out of your ass. The Yankees are a good team. I've never denied that. I've said they weren't the best team in baseball. Just like I said, Garrett Cole's not the best pitcher in baseball. And I'm right about both of them. The Yankees are a good team when healthy. They're a great team when healthy. I said they would go on a massive run at the end of the season, and they are doing so. They are proving me right yet again. But they're not the best team in baseball. The Dodgers are the best team, heads and tails, a world above everybody. And truth be told, if you really want to get down to the nitty-gritty of it, the, the Padres are better than the Yankees right now. The Cubs are better than the Yankees right now. The Yankees... When healthy are great, but they have to rely on two players to smack the ball long each time. And if they don't do it, they're not successful. They're going to continue to do that for the remainder of the regular season. But when you get into a best of seven or a best of five series against a great baseball team, you know, hence having to play against, you know, American League-wise, having to play a team like Oakland who will just beat you down, having to play against a team like the Blue Jays. They've wrecked the Blue Jays, and we've been on the side of the Yankees. But don't think that, you know, Bo Bichette and, you know, Biggio can't come out there and, you know, Vlad Guerrero can't come out there and smack a weak pitching presence around because it can happen. Don't get too cocky, Yankee fans, because I'm telling you the team you better worry about is a team by the name of the Minnesota Twins or the Chicago White Sox. Those are the teams you better hope you're not having to play in a best of seven against. But anyway, I digress. The Dodgers are the best team in baseball, no matter what any of you want to say. doesn't mean they'll win the World Series. That's my pick, and I, I made that pick while the World Series was going on last year that they would win it in 2020. And until they are eliminated, that will be my pick. Um, but anyway, took them. We also had um, a play, <clears throat> excuse me, on the LA Dodgers to take care of business in Colorado. Had a fairly low money line on that one, considering what it could have been. I was expecting a money line of a dollar eighty-five or above, and we're getting it at one fifty as an opening line. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. So that one, very easy win there, no issues whatsoever on that game. And then we also had the Cleveland Indians on the run line. Perfect spot to take Cleveland and a bounce back after getting worked by the Cubs for the last 18 innings. And, uh, yeah, they absolutely scorched them. I mean, absolutely beat the brakes off of them. So a nice win there. And then our early game also cashed on the San Francisco Giants. On the money line, minus $1.30. They were down 4-1 to one at one point. Ended up coming back winning the game 6-4. to four. Uh, so another profitable day in Major League Baseball. One thing I'm disappointed in is the Boston Celtics did not come through tonight, so we dropped that. But I still think Boston is a better team 
than Miami. But what did I say about Miami in the last series that was not only why they were winning, but why they were going to end up winning the series against the Bucks? They were playing harder, and they are still playing harder. They're playing harder than any team in the NBA. They keep that up. Not only will they make the finals, they could win the finals. Jimmy Butler's playing harder than any player in the league right now, period. So Boston better get their head out of their ass. They lose one more. If they drop the next game to the Heat, the Heat will then basically forfeit a game. And when I say forfeit, I mean they'll lay down, they'll rest up, they'll let the loss happen, and you'll watch them come out in game five and put the Celtics away with a smile on their face. So they better get with it. Speaking of the NBA, the Lakers and the Nuggets start. They kick off their Western Conference Finals game one. Uh, Lakers are laying six and a half. With, I think that's what I saw when I looked at it, but I'm looking at the total. So I bet the total. Total sitting at 210 right now. I saw one 210 and a half at Bovada. Um, five dimes, which five dimes is going to be irrelevant here to American people, at least for the time being on the 29th. But William Hill, which is what I go off of, and pretty much any Vegas book is sitting at 210. And most anybody would say under. Because the Lakers have been playing, again, you know how I feel about NBA defense. It's non-existent. But if what you want to consider defense in the NBA, the Lakers have it. They are playing it. And in this the bubble, um, they've gotten better at it than they were outside the bubble. And in the postseason, other than two just flop games that they had, I would say outside of the Nuggets, they've been the best defensive team. Maybe even a little bit better than the Nuggets. It really depends on how you want to look at it. And we all know that the Nuggets are a good defensive team. That's their MO. They're kind of like the Jazz. They're a team that just wears you down. They they have one guy, their middle guy, that they focus around. They feed him in. They burn time, and they pressure you up and down the court. So you would say, obviously, under, because why wouldn't you want to take the defensive team against the team that continues to get better at defense? And each team's going to feed off that, and there just isn't going to be a lot of scoring. I think that we see the opposite of that, because I think with what the Nuggets did to the Clippers, I think the Lakers are, they, they, you know, the, the Nuggets have been put on notice. The Lakers have them. LeBron and AD are going to have that team ready to go. And I think that LeBron, again, despite what I think about him as a human being, the, the fact remains that he is still the best player in the NBA um, for a lot of reasons. And a lot of it is just because he is so dominant. I don't think that he's the best skill player in the NBA. I think that KD is much better than he is. And one thing that the, the Lakers don't do, and this includes LeBron, they don't shoot free throws worth a shit. To, to look at the talent they have, they just don't. But look at when their feet's to the fire against good defensive teams. Hence, when they play the Jazz, when they play the Nuggets in the regular season, when they play the likes of the Clippers, they always do better with free throws. But they also don't go to the line as many times. They let the teams play. I think you'll see that on Friday. And if they do go to the line a lot, I think it'll be even. So even if the Lakers aren't shooting well from the line, the Nuggets will. The Nuggets will shoot well from the line. What I think is going to happen is the Lakers are going to know the Nuggets' MO. The teams know each other well. The Lakers know that the best thing they can do is come out fast and run them and gun them up and down the court. Don't let the defense get in front of you. If they get out in front of you, they're hard to take. They're a big team. So if they come out and they start playing fast, they start gaining success, what do the Lakers do when they get comfortable? When they get comfortable and the points are dropping, they start moving the ball better. But you also start seeing more three-point shots, which can be good or bad. But I think, like Kuzma, and I also think that LeBron will both take more threes than normal, and I think they'll have success with it. On the other side of things, the Nuggets, who found ways to push their own pace against the likes of the Clippers, I think they'll do the same. When they go down and they ramp that defense up a little bit more, they're going to feed the ball inside even more. Everybody's going to collapse on the inside. It's going to force them outside. They will also go to the three-point line. The Lakers are horrible at defending the three. They just are. And the thing is, if you look at the way their team's set up with AD and LeBron and these guys, they shouldn't be good at guarding the three. They have to collapse inside and play that forward position back to prevent someone from eating them inside. 
because inside is where LeBron's going to be dominant. AD's going to be able to be dominant. I think that on both sides, this ball gets fed out more so than we're used to seeing. And I think that's going to be because of pace of play. Now, if both teams have a terrible night from three, yes, I think the game could go under. And I think that if you look at the stats from both teams and you go back to the beginning of the year and what's happened, obviously the under would be the right play. But I think that's too easy of a play. That would be saying that these teams are coming in just like any other game. They're not. The Nuggets, they have nothing to lose here. The Lakers have everything to lose. Everything. This proves that they are the best team in basketball to go play to be the best team in basketball. The Nuggets are already farther than they thought they would be or anybody thought they could be. So they're going to be willing to take the chances, play the faster game, and not rely so much on their defense and let that offense be what takes them win to win. Game one, I think everybody leaves it on the floor. I think they play faster than normal. I think they play outside more than normal. And I think we see more buckets than we would in any other situation. Again, as this series goes on and we get into games two, three, four, I do think that that defense will become you know, more of a presence and become more relevant in the games. And I think we'll get back to seeing where those true teams shine. But in game one, I think they're both going out there with their own mindset of how they have to beat the other team. And the Lakers know that playing the Nuggets at a slow pace where the Nuggets want them, right now the way they're, what their team's doing, you don't want to do that. You want to force them out of their comfort zone, make them play fast. If the Lakers have to start having success early playing fast, they're going to rack up points. That's going to force the Nuggets to have to do the same thing. And I think that from the foul line and the three-point line, the Nuggets will put up points. And I think 210's low. Looking at it from the way I'm looking at it and looking at it from past historical games between these two teams throughout this season and teams similar to them this season and looking at who I think the, the key pieces of these games on both sides will be, I actually came up with a total of 215 and a half. So again, in basketball, five points isn't a lot. It can happen in the blink of an eye. But in game one, as I think that these teams play opposite of what we normally see from them, I'm going to have to go with the opposite of what everybody's going to think from the beginning, and I'm going to go over 210 points. Make sure you go to chasewins.com. Get on a package. Don't miss out. Get on a winning weekend. Get three-day package, 50 bucks. Seven-day package, 99 bucks. Uh, get on the MLB preseason or postseason pass. Get on a football pass for 50% off. Get on something. If you have any questions, let me know. Chase at chasewins.com. Get on now. Be a part of all the new features that we're rolling out. The merch is coming. I finally got my deal set up with Nike and with the oh, – my bad – with the Jordan brand so that that can be what the merch is on, not using any cheap stuff. That's what I have been waiting on before I put it on the site, was to make sure that it was the brands that I personally wear every day and that I want to be able to provide to you all the best out there. I don't want anything that I wouldn't personally wear. So all the Venture sport, Sports merch will be up next week. I'm excited about that. Make sure you get on board, and I will see you in the winner's circle. Thanks, guys.